Hi friend, it's Hunter from Interactive and in today's video I will show you how to create a multi-layered texture or a bottle inside of Blender. And so we'll be creating this texture all within the one material. So the glass, the label, the foil, everything will be all in the one material. And this video will go through that step by step as simple as possible to help you understand how this works. So to begin with our journey will either start in Illustrator or Photoshop and this doesn't have to be the start of the journey but if you're using wine labels most likely you've got it from a designer. So you may need to use Adobe Illustrator to break it apart or of course you can ask the designer to break it apart ready for you in Photoshop. But we will need Photoshop to make some of those textures and to make some of our bump maps and displacement maps for our label. We'll explain this further as we go on. If you're new or an intermediate user of Blender, chances are you don't know all the shortcuts and you're going into menus constantly to use the tools that you want to use. So I've put together a hotkey PDF so you can pick and choose the shortcuts you use day to day and implement them to help speed up your workflow inside of Blender. You can download this PDF down below for free at the link in the description. Let's move on to the video. So this is a label I've downloaded from Kittle, which is a really awesome site that can build lots of vintage looking labels, lots of old labels, and they come out with some really good results. And you can customize this a lot more than I have, and I will be throughout this video. So I'll be changing some of the colors. However, I wanted to set it up so that I can do all of this in Blender. So the first thing we will need to do is break this apart into its layers. So what I want to do is make sure that I've got a reference image or an idea of what I want in my head. Now, I'm lucky I've got a reference image of a render that I've done, which I'll pull up and I've got a few renders. So let's open this one up. So you can see here that this is what I want the label to look like. So if I look at it, there's three colors here. There's a black color in the background. There's the text, which is just simple white. And then there is a silver color here. And if you notice, if you look closely at the silver, and if we look closely at the silver, you'll see that this has a slight bump map to it. And then the rest has this paper texture on it. So what we need to do with the silver is break it apart from the rest of the layers so that we can add this bump map to it and control that in Blender. And we'll do that all within Adobe Illustrator. So what I can do here is take those three layers and name and add three layers here. So I'll call this one uh, black or let's call this one paper. And that'll be our base layer. We'll come down here and press new twice. We'll double click the name and we'll call this one uh, text or white text, whatever is easiest for you. And then we'll label the top one as the silver foil. So now what I can do is start to break this apart. Now this is quite confusing to do if you don't know Adobe Illustrator. And sometimes the files won't come out that great from Kittle. So they're a little bit hard to work with because they give you so much information in the file. So all I'm going to do is start breaking this apart. And I recommend you watch some tutorials on Adobe Illustrator because I can't really teach you all of it in this video. The video would be really long. However, I'm just going to go ahead and break this apart and basically what you want to do is have these all in separate layers. So the foil color, we want it on the foil layer. We want the white text on this layer here and we want the paper shape in the back on the base layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now.
All right, so now that I've finished that, it's time to export this out as a PSD. And so what I can do is just head up to file and I'm going to save this document first and I'll pop it in here and I'll save it as an AI file, save, hit OK. Then I can go to file, down to export, export as, and now in my folders, I'm going to drop this one, the PSD, right on top of it. And then I will rename this one to be the number. So number the project. I'm going to just check use artboards and we'll go export. RGB, hit OK. All right, so once that's done, we can open this up into Photoshop. It'll pop open. Here's all our layers. I'm just going to grab all these. Control C. And I'll go edit. Uh, paste special. Paste in place. Right, so there's our label. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is to shrink it. So with those folders selected, we can go uh, Command T or Control T. Just going to zoom out using... Command or Control minus, and we'll just shrink this down. Not holding the shift key. <laughs> All right, let's zoom in. And this is the displacement map we created in another video. So you can go watch that video on how to create displacement maps. I'll pop a link in the description or maybe up in a card. And we create this uh, ridge displacement map. All right, so what we need to do here is resize this. I'm just going to quickly uh, rasterize this layer here because I know it's pretty heavy. I have a backup document of this. Then I'm just going to go and start moving this into place for our label. So we'll just drop it down in size and we'll position it where we think will be good for the label to sit. Let's zoom in. So there's a few things that we need to do from here. We've got our paper texture here. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this one. We've got a copy. Bring it down here. Just going to get rid of some of these other layers I've already got. That I don't need. So those two. Like that. And so what I can do is the first thing I want to do is separate this displacement from the file or from the label. So it's got a little edge. So that's why I copied the paper. The paper is the background shape. Let's hide these. Paper is the background shape here. So what I can do is if I right click this one and merge the group here. Then I've just got a merged shape and I'm not too worried about this. So what I can do now is control or command press on the layer. And you can see here that we get this uh, shape that outlines the outside. So now what I can do is with that selection, I can go select and down to modify and expand. And we can put in a figure here. So I'm just going to try 20 or we'll hit OK. And you can see here that it's separated that from the background. And now I believe we can go edit to fill here. And we want to fill it with the same color that the layer is. So we'll go black. Now I can just press Ctrl or Command D to deselect any marching ants. And I'll bring this layer down just above the pattern. And then what I can do is do what I've done here with a clipping mask. So what I can do is just bring this up, go solid color. And I'm going to go to about a 50%. And if you've watched the other video on displacement maps, you'll know what the values mean. So I can go 50%. Maybe you can go a bit lower, so maybe a bit darker, just so that it doesn't pop out as much. 
hit OK. Now what I can do is clip this to our paper layer. So I'll just go uh, hold down the Alt or Option key and hover between the two and clip it. So you can see there that it's clipped the two together. And we can adjust this color. So I'm going to go a bit darker like so. And now I'm going to delete these two, put them in the bin. And another thing I might want to do is turn on the paper layer. Now let's work on the white. White's pretty good. Let's have a little bit of a look at it. And then we've got our foil up the top here. So what I can do now is start dividing these. So with the background turned off, I can actually create masks. Turn that one off. I can create masks for our layers. So I can export this one. So we'll do that. File. And I usually just go uh, save as copy. Here yeah, and we will go to our images. And I'll go new folder and I'll just call this one textures. We'll create that. And then what I can do is turn off the layers, go to a TIFF. So we've got a high res file and I'm just going to rename the center bit here. We'll call this one um, label or paper mask, whatever's easiest for you. But basically we need to tell ourselves that this is a mask for the paper. Then we'll hit save, hit OK, and then we can go up the stack. So now we've got a white layer. I can see now that the black here, the black is showing up on our white layer. So what I can do is because we brought it from Adobe Illustrator, we can actually take a look at what's going on. And I'm actually going to add a adjustment layer, a solid color, and we'll make it straight black. Then we'll clip it using Alt or Option to that layer here. So we've got this here. That's a bit of an issue with the circles. So what I can do there's the layer. So that's the beauty of using Illustrator is it'll divide all the layers out for us. And then what I can do is that's our paper layer for our mask. So what I'll do is go file, save as copy. We'll save this one as a TIFF once more. We'll save it into our textures. We'll call it a mask, so we'll go uh, white uh, text mask. We'll get rid of the copy bit, don't really need that. I know I saved it on the other one. Then we'll drop the layers off just so the file's a little bit smaller. Hit OK. And we'll do the same thing for our foil layer. So I can just click the layer holding Alt, drag it up, and it will duplicate it. Let's drag it above our foil layer, clip it to the foil turn that on. Let's turn that layer on alone. And so you can see now that we have got a mask for the oil. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I think I will just leave the foil the same layer as the paper or the same height. So what I'll do is just file uh, save as copy. Now this will make more sense when we actually get to doing it. So then I'll go save it in here and we'll save that one as our silver oil and a mask and we'll drop that down as a TIFF. Save, hit OK and there we go. Alright, so we may jump back into Photoshop a little bit later to add some extra details. But for now, we'll jump over into Blender. 
All right, so this is over in Blender and we will be building pretty much what I've built here. So I've got some reference images down bottom here, which we'll be rebuilding. So the first thing is we'll start off with the glass. So what I can do is just click the X and that'll get rid of my material. I'll hit new material and I'll call this one bottle point zero zero uh, one. And so now we've got over here the principal BSDF and the output. So right now it's just outputting a rough sort of just smooth white color, which is the default in Blender. Also, if you lose the principal BSDF, you can just uh, head to view and you can frame all or you can hit the home key. But you have to actually have it selected. So all I do if I lose it. I will just press A on the keyboard, which will select it, then just hit view and then frame all and that'll frame it so you can find it easily. So now we need to build out a long chain of things. So the first thing is I'm going to actually get rid of the Princewood BSDF, uh, which I don't actually have to if I want to use it. However, I'm going to pop in a glass one. So let's just hit X to delete. Shift A will search for a glass BSDF. We'll pop that in. And I'm just going to go BSDF to the surface here. You can see straight away we've got our glass. Now this is very well lit. So another thing that will affect your bottle renders here will be lighting. And I will go further uh, in the future into lighting bottles on this channel. So the next thing is we've already got our IOR set up and a few things we need to do. So I've actually created a roughness map for this and I'll have to find the image for that because I've used a dust texture. So what I can do is go uh, shift A search for image texture and we'll just pop that there. And I'm just going to do a uh, spotlight search for dust. We'll see if we can pick anything up. Here we go. And I can command click on it. And I'll get the location. So I'll just drop that in. And I can't remember where I got this from, but a Google search away and you might get it. But then I've got a dust layer here. And what I can do is we'll be going, we'll keep it srgb what's it going into roughness no we'll have to keep it uh, a non-color so now what i've done is i've just added a mapping node so uh control or command t and this one is node wrangler so what happens with node wrangler is it will uh, add all these features to Blender and it's an add-on so you can just go edit preferences add-ons it should be on by default personally I reckon it should be checked so you just search node wrangler check it it'll be there personally it's a tool I use all the time it's one of the first things I turn on when I grab a new version of Blender so the next thing I want to do is we can plug this dust into the roughness here you can see here it's quite crazy already. So what I can do is just come in here, hovering over the top one, the X in the scale on the mapping. We can just click the top one, drag straight down. And if I do it quickly, I can let go and type in 10 and hit enter. And that'll scale that dust texture down a heap. Still got a heap of texture in there. But what I can do now is Shift A, search for color ramp and I use color ramps all the time. I spell them wrong because I'm in Australia and we use a U there. However, what I want to do with the color ramp is just bring the white up a little bit. So we'll do that. Bring it up a little bit. We'll have a look at this. And I want to crunch the black down the tad. And so what I'm doing is effectively removing a bit of that roughness just so it's a subtle effect. And of course, with everything in Blender, it will take some time to tweak it or up and down, get the result that you would like. So this one's really subtle. 
I can barely see it. Somewhere in there. It's got this subtle texture on it. And now what I can do is we want to set up the other layer here. So what I'm doing is for the glass here, I'm going to plug in a normal map. So the first thing I want to add is a noise texture. We'll pop that down. We'll go control T, which will add our mapping and texture coordinate and it'll be under the generated. Zoom in so you can see. I'm going to put in a scale of 1000 and I've already done this detail of eight and that should be good. And I'll put in a color ramp here. We'll pop that in and I'm just going to lift the white just up ever so slightly. Uh, something like that. And then I'll go shift A, add a bump map so we can convert it so that it will plug into the normal. So we'll go color to height. I'm going to add this as a 0 0.005. 0 0.005. Plug that into the normal. That so just adds a little bit of texture onto our glass. Makes it a little bit more realistic. And now what you can do is with this one, we can go Shift A, search, or frame, hit enter. We'll drop the frame down. We'll select all this just by box selecting. So uh, left clicking and dragging across it all. Drag it into the box here. And we can name this one. So if you just hit N, we'll bring up this little panel on the side. We can name the frame as uh, glass. And we want to put a label on it, so glass. I'll add a color. Or maybe not, just leave it regular. It's just got a glass label up the top there. You can make the, uh, the label size a bit bigger. You can actually see what's going on. There we go. All right, so we're good to move on. And so the next thing I might do is uh, create our displacement map. So what I'll do is I'm going to go back to Photoshop. So we'll drop back in there. I have got a video on this one. So I'll just uh, quickly do it. So we'll just turn on the two layers that we created there. And we can uh, save this one out. Which is Turn on that. We'll go file, uh, save as copy. Pop it into our images and textures. And I'll just grab one of these. And we'll just name this uh, displacement. And I'll get rid of that there. And we'll make it a TIFF. Save. Okay. Let's jump back into Blender here. And what I'll do is we'll set this one up. So just to bear in mind that I think I've already got it set up down here. No, so we'll do that in a second. Hit end to close this panel here. And what I'll do now is drop it in my displacement. So I'll have to find that one. Drop it in right there next thing I want to do is add a displacement node displacement we'll pop that in we'll go color to height and displacement to displacement let's bring this up here make it a little bit neat 0.5 and I just go point uh, one two let's hit enter we'll go to a non color and I'm also going to go shift A, we'll search for a UV map. And so we've already got a, a, our UVs done. And I do have a video on creating UV maps, which you can go check out if you don't know how to do that. I will plug that into the vector. That'll just map it nicely for us. And so you can see here, we've got the flat area of our bottle, but you can also see that we've got some strange things happening here on the edge. So what I want to do is come into our material properties 
And if you scroll down really far down here, we've got under the settings, we've got a surface and we've got a bump only. So we just want to set that to displacement and bump. And instantly that should pop up and create a nice bump on our bottle. Now it doesn't look amazing just yet. Sometimes I'll drop the numbers just so it's not so heavy. Something like that. I think we'll look all right. We're going to continue on and we can tweak it later if we feel that it needs to be changed. So next we want to work on our paper textures. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm to quickly save this. So what I can do here is I want to drop in my paper mask. Let's drop that into the top here. We want to up above everything here. Uh, you can organize all this how you would like, but this is how I do it. I'm going to drag the glass a bit further away. We'll zoom into this one here. And what we want to do is add a mix shader. So Shift A will add a mix. And we can use our arrow key just to go down and mix shader. Hit enter. Drop it in the center here. And what I want to do is just grab this glass and plug it into one of the shader slots for now. And then grab this shader here plug it into the output on the material output properties. So straight away we got some funky stuff happening. What's happening here is it's saying uh, 0.5 factor so it's basically uh, mixing it with nothing here because this other shader slot's empty. So what we'll do is we'll plug in our mask here. We'll change the color space uh, to a non-color and we'll just drop the mask so we'll drop the color into the factor and so you can see here something's happening I believe it is the wrong way around so what I can do is grab the shader plug it into the bottom and there you go so that's what the we want here and so that's masked out it's working by default but I'm just going to add the UV map anyway UV map and we'll just plug it in uh, just to be safe. So the next thing I can do is make my text and paper textures. So I'm going to go shift A. We'll add a principled VSDF. We'll pop that one up into the top slot here. So you can see instantly we've got this effect here. And so you can see how we can customize this. Now I set this one up different last time, but since then I've started setting up my files a little bit different to how I did the bottle. So what I'm going to do is just come down here and we'll use a paper texture. I've got a paper texture sitting here and I'll drop that in here and we'll have a fiddle around with this one and see if we can get it to be work really well. So we'll go to a non-color and this is just a paper texture, like a photo of a paper texture. So it's not the best because it's not seamless. However, we'll see if we can make it work in this case. So what I want to do is add a bump. Drop that in. We'll go color to the height and the bump to the normal. And so we can see there already something's happening. So what I can do is come over here, control T. We will pop that in, pop that in there using a UV. We'll drop our bump down to 0 0.05, hit enter. Got some funky stuff happening. And I've got some pre-made figures where I've moved it. So I'm going to go to the location. We're going to go 7.6 meters. It's typed in 8, 7.6. And we're going to scale this to 3. Enter. 
And this is another one of those effects where you will play around with it because right now it's looking super stretched. So what I might do in this case is I've got some other textures are hidden away. So what I can do is go grab another paper texture. So I'll have a look at what I've got. So in here, we'll drop it in. Paper texture. Let's drop this one in. This one is an actual normal map, which means that it looks blue. So if I have a look at it up here, we we'll search that one. Paper 01. So this is what the normal map looks like. So I won't need a bump map for this one. I'll go Shift A. We'll search for a normal map instead. And we'll plug that into the color. We'll plug the normal into the normal. Plug the vector into the vector and we'll drop that to a non-color. We'll have a look at it. I don't feel I'm getting any results with this one. Let's drop the scale back down to one. This is something that I might play around with over time and play around with some different textures. I've always uh, had a little bit of trouble with uh, realistic paper textures. You just play around and there's so many different papers and effects. So it depends on the bottle that you're creating. But just keep playing around, see what you get. We've got some issue going on here. I drop in a color ramp. Maybe we can compress some of the colors just before it goes to there. So we'll bring down the colors a bit. We'll go uh, non color too. Bring it up a little bit. Play around with this one. I'm not going to spend too much time. But that one there is our paper. Paper. So what I can do now is I'll continue tweaking this after because I'm getting an effect I don't really want. But well, it'll be to do with the texture here going into the bump. And it'll be a bit of the distance and all sorts of things going on here that we need to tweak. Uh, maybe drop the strength to 0.5 or something like that. And it'll be also the denoiser. We'll be playing some. If I've got it turned on, go up. The denoise, if I turn that off, we might have some better luck with it. Anyway, what I'll do is drop in a frame. This is always something you can continue tweaking, which is part of the process. We'll drop that into a frame. Um, we'll move the frame down a bit like that. Press N. We'll name this frame um, Paper. Now what I can do is press N, hide that panel. And the next thing I can do is uh, select all this. Go Shift D. We'll drag it across. Pop it somewhere here. We'll grab all this stuff. Continue moving it on. We will plug... Uh, the shader into one of these slots. I'm going to pick the bottom one. Selecting this one here. I believe I can go control shift click this one and I'll plug it straight into the material output. Now we want to change this one here. So let's open up our folders and we want to go to our white text mask. Open up and there's our text. We'll go Shift A and we'll add in a principle. And we'll plug that into there. And we've got white text. So the next thing I want to do is drop that background to black. So we'll select the color, bring it down really dark. 
so that our label is black. So this is the beauty of doing it this way. We can customize the colors. If the client goes, hey, that color is not correct, we're not sending it from Photoshop into uh, Blender as a full color. So we can customize it fully in here. Next thing I'm going to do is take this uh, bump map and we'll just plug it straight over into the normal over there. Just so it uh, carries across the text. So that's the text, that's pretty easy. Let's drag this continue on, drag that across and we will duplicate this again. This, these three, shift D to duplicate them. We'll plug this into the bottom slot here. We will control shift click the mix shader and we'll put in the silver foil mask. Okay. Here's our layer. We'll shift A at a principled BSTF just like we've done. Um, you can also pop that one in a frame so we'll do that. Frame, it just makes it easier if I hand this file to someone else I'm working with or if I come in the future and I've got a different process to what I usually use. It uh, just helps if it's in a frame and it's noted. So this one is the, uh, or we'll just call it the text. Like so, close that and we'll drop this one in. We'll plug that into the shader there. Uh, control S just to save it. And what I'll do is we've got white text. So we want to bring metallic up and the roughness down on this one. We'll go a long way down. Let's have a look at this one. Now one thing I did last time was I actually uh, made a displacement for this and added it to this displacement texture bit only because uh, this doesn't look great at the moment. Uh, another thing I could do is make a normal map which we might do. So what we can do is drop over to uh, Photoshop and with this layer here, I'm just going to duplicate it, pop it there, hide the other ones, right click, we'll rasterize the layers um, and we'll merge layers. So I've just got this here, uh, hiding all the backgrounds. You could uh, do this all separately, but what I'm going to do is go filter. We will go filter 3D. Let's do a bump map. Doesn't really matter that much. We'll let Photoshop do its thing. 3D is fairly slow in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to just, yeah, go wine bottle. Let it do its thing. So we got this shape. So I don't know if it knows what it's grabbed. We'll play around with some of these settings. Let's not do this. Undo. What I'll do is hide these and all I'm going to do is actually just uh, make this one a smart object and we'll just add a Gaussian blur to it so filter uh, Gaussian blur right there for us. Just add a bit of a blur like so. Hit OK um, and you can save that one out shift S. We'll play around with this blur like that's why I've made it a smart object. Uh, because they can be a little bit fiddly and then we'll go we'll call this one uh, the silver but I'll just call this one bump uh, hit OK we'll go back over to blender down here I will pop in my 
bump map so we'll find that silver bump pop that in we'll go uh, over to non color and we'll go bump map we'll drop the color into the height and normal into the normal right away there you go So we have got a problem with the We have got a little bit of an issue with the glass coming to the back of this So what I'll do is go uh, UV UV map Actually we can just go uh, Control T Like so, and we'll go 0.25 distance. It's really subtle. And before I start fixing some of these issues here, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, give it a render just in case it's not actually uh, coming through. So these little holes, I can see the glass coming through. So if I give it a render and it's not happening over here, we'll be fine. Uh, if it's happening to you, we may need to adjust the sizes of some of our displacement and masks and things like that. So unfortunately it is coming through. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing a a bump map here, we'll disconnect that one. I'm going to go over to Photoshop and I'm going to turn on my displacement map stuff here uh, and a, a pattern there. And what we're going to do is drag this layer down so it's just on top. We'll keep it like this, but what I'll do is add a color ramp, which we will go, let's do, we'll add a layer. Curves maybe, a levels, we'll add a levels. Uh, we'll bring it up here, we'll go. No, we need it up here. So we'll add it to that layer. Looping mask. And I just want to bring these in. I just want it ever so subtle. And it's just going to be slightly darker than the layer. And we'll play around with this. So now we'll just go uh, Command Alt S or Control Alt S and we'll try this one. So we'll go uh, Displacement uh, O2. O2. Get rid of the, those. Save. Go over here. We'll plug it in here. Yeah, so Displacement O2. Pop it in. that's done it another thing you could do if you get really clever is mix the displacements the one thing here that I've done wrong is the displacements actually going the opposite direction which means that because it's darker I need this to be lighter than the opposite way something like that and if I go look yes Let's go, save as copy, go save over our displacement to replace, hit OK, let's go back into here, we'll just reload it. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, so.
but there you go and of course you can go into Photoshop and tweak this even more so you can just use your this here and just flatten it really close to the layer here so you can have it as subtle as you want you can have as much as you want but we'll tr give that a go so we'll give it a little bit more subtle we'll name this three so I've got another version of it we'll go back and we will replace it something like that something like that will work And in the last video, I did show how to mix displacements. So you could do a technique like that where you can control the displacement and mix them all together. You could also add a little bit of texture to this if you want it, um, which we could do. Uh, just with the noise texture, if we get rid of this one, we'll go to our generated. We'll go shift A, we'll go uh, noise. And you can either use roughness here or bump. Uh, we'll go to the vector, go into the height, plug that into there. So this is going to be very big. We'll add 100, 1000. And then what I want to do, we'll drop. The Color ramp, pop that in between. We will drop the distance of something like 0 0.05. And I'm going to play around with some of these colors on the color ramp. We'll drop the strength, play around with it, 0.45. Have a look at it back here. All right, I'm pretty happy with this result. You can keep playing around with the Photoshop layers, the textures, I try and get some really sick paper textures in there. The process really is about tweaking it until you get it right. Another thing here is I, the bump map's quite high. So I would probably divide these two just, just so that uh, I can control the height of this and the height of this one here separately or the foil but however it's ready for a render at the end and just keep tweaking saving versions you can also save versions of the file if you think you're going to do a, a bigger version or a big change save a version of it just so you can go back and continue working continue tweaking and editing the effect However, that's how I create a layered texture. Now this one is directly onto the bottle, so the glass textures with it. Um, there's other ways to do layered textures uh, on their own separate layers. Uh, so that it's not connected to the bottle. It's an actual another uh, model or object in our outliner here. Now this one was a bit of a long one. Hopefully it gives you a better understanding on how to do this in Blender. And I'll continue making these tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.